Welcome to the Head to Head Challenge. Today we are in Rotterdam with People Minded Media. This studio is today the place to be for the finalists of Miss World Netherlands 2023-24. The Head to Head Challenge is to test the skills of interviewing and the knowledge of the young girls. So if you want to see all about them, we have Team Orange, White, Blue and Red. Of course, these are also the colors representing the Netherlands. Are you ready to face them? Hallo, ik ben Stephanie van Driel. Ik ben 26 jaar oud. Ik kom uit Voorne aan Zee. Uh, mijn hobby's zijn uh, piano spelen, zingen, dansen, uh, karate. Ik wens alle meiden super veel succes toe. Hallo iedereen, mijn naam is Demi. Ik ben 21 jaar oud. Ik woon in Utrecht. Mijn hobby's zijn reizen en fitness. En ik wens iedereen een hele leuke tijd en heel veel succes. Hoi, mijn naam is Selina, ik ben 19 jaar oud en ik kom uit Hoofddorp. Mijn hobby's zijn dansen en voetballen en ik wens alle finalisten heel veel succes. Hello, you there. And we are back with Team Blue. With Selina, Demi en Stephanie. Welcome, ladies. And as you just saw their introductions, you see them right now over here. And we are going to talk about their beauty with a purpose to begin with. So tell me something more about your beauty with a purpose. In short, please. Uh, my beauty with a purpose is SDG 13. It's a climate action, so I'm taking on the climate crisis. And I have done a lot so far. I've done scientific research with the study that I'm following. I've uh, approached and um, um, approached companies and people to uh, work and live more environmentally friendly. And I've come very far. Uh, and I want to be even more. Okay, thank you. My beauty pit purpose is about SDG 3, three and uh, that's about good health and well-being. Um, it's about um, growing up in an uh, in a, a, a with a parent who has mental health issues and an addiction, and I want to um, um, bring awareness to the stage. Bring, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, my beauty with a purpose is actually SDG uh, 3 about mental health. And this is uh, specifically about uh, fear and uh, mental health. Um, I've been doing research about it, like how many people are suffering about it. And in the, um, in the living complex that I'm living with, um, I've been uh, collecting a group that also has experienced the same story. I've been explaining my own story talk about it and give him tips. Thank you so much. So also for you girls, you received a list of a long, long story of powerful women out of the past. So the one that we are going to talk about today is Anna Freud. Tell me something about her. Who is she? What did she do? How did she mark herself? And what is the, um, how can I say it? What kind of impression did she leave with you? She was a psychoanalysis. Yes, indeed. She uh, was the daughter of a psychoanalysis and that's how she, uh, how she learned that. Um, and she was uh, focusing on children mostly. She um, yeah. used and to work in an elementary school. Yes, and you can also link an SDG to her story, right? Yes, SDG 3, yes, mental health. Yes, indeed. So it's in, in line of the two of you. Tell me something more about yeah. her. In 1937, she opened an, a nursery. Um, but in 1938, the Nazis uh, came because of the war. So she fled away. Um, and then in 1941, she opened with two friends a new nursery in London. And when she died... Um, on the age of 86, she, um, the nursery called um, by her name the Anna Freud Center. Yes, indeed. And you? What uh, yes, more can pretty, you tell? It's pretty amazing to um, learn about the story, how she became a psychoanalyst. 
uh, because she also dreamed about it and uh, by the dream she uh, decided to analyze those uh, those kids. How can you re reflect her life to your life? Especially for the two of you? Helping people, kids or adults, it doesn't matter. And for you? Yeah, I think um, uh, being aspiring, being an uh, inspiration to children because she dreamed uh, at the age of 14 to inspire children and that's what I want to do, yeah. It's the same. Yes. And you, Stephanie, can you add something to that? Yes, I think she was a very powerful woman. She was very dedicated to, yes. uh, to help children, to help people. And um, we all want to do that as well. Yes. And of course, with your projects and you have sustainability and both of you health issues. And it's totally different from each other because it's very large. Hilda Shoes. But another one we want to discuss with you is Bessie Coleman. So what do you remember of this powerful lady, Selina? Um, well, Bessie Coleman is really an inspiration for me because she's the first African-American um, pilot. Uh, she uh, lived with her um, mother and she had 12 sisters and brothers. She uh, was born in Texas. Until her age um, of 18, she helped her mother in housekeeping. And then um, when she was 23, she was, she was to used to live by her brothers in Chicago. And her brothers always um, make her jealous of the, that French woman can study for p being a pilot. So that, is, um, that was what she wants to do. So she went to French to study there for pilot. And then she became the first African-American pilot. Yes, indeed. Anything else you can tell about her, Damie? I know that she flied a lot. Unfortunately, she also died by her last flight. Um, the flight before, luckily not. Um, uh, she dreamed a lot about it. Uh, she followed the footsteps of her dad that also had the same career and uh, yeah, uh, whose dream is not to fly the whole world. That's really beautiful and a really big inspiration if someone, someone else wants to fly. Yes, it's uh, spread your wings Literally. and see the Literally. world indeed, yeah. Anything to add, Stephanie, to this amazing woman? Yes, so she actually made flying a really big deal in America. Um, as Celine sh said, she uh, got her a flying license in France because they were a lot more open there to uh, both women and African American people uh, at that school particularly and after she got her uh, flying license she made it a really big deal in America and people started to do acrobatics and uh, stuff like that on airplanes. Yes and if you look at these days are there a lot of women into the pilot industry or is it still Lots more, I think. Lots because more. I think also in the future, uh, women will get more opportunity uh, to get uh, to be a pilot, to uh, swim, or to whatever women cannot do right now. To uh, yeah, to feel free, feel more free. Okay. So, if you want to reflect her life to yours, what message did you get from her? Never. To never stop until you reach a purpose, even though it's unfair. To prove that it's not unfair. That's a very good one. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Amy. Okay, so another thing that you got is a team. And your team, let me have a look, is education. So education is really good arranged in the Netherlands. But still, there's also a lot that's not so well arranged in the Netherlands. Can you explain me what are you facing into the field of education? Well, not really for me specifically, but um, I do hear a lot around me that um, classes are very big and there are not enough teachers. And uh, that seems to be quite a big problem in education. And for that reason, um, it takes, takes a bit longer to finish a study, for example, for a lot of people. Okay, Selina? I think the different levels. There are so many um, children who want to study on the 
uh, HBO, the higher schools, but it's not possible because they have uh, a lower level. So I think it uh, has to be more uh, easier to come to a school what you really want. Damie? Well, little kids have from the beginning really, really big dreams. Um, even though if they live in a poor family or a rich family, it's getting really expensive and that holds them back to follow their dreams. Also with the levels that they have, it should not matter which level you have. You want to study so much, but for too much money that you actually cannot afford. But isn't it like this that you can study in the Netherlands and you get you get it a loan for it? So where is it that it goes wrong then? Because there are facilities for it. I think it goes wrong with the amount of money because in other countries it's it's more cheaper and you have more opportunities and a less less strict rules. Such as if you say less rules less rules as as um the levels how smart you ha have to be to be in a class which um which paper you have to get in your pocket to even join a class are you agree upon that stephanie and uh, selena do you have anything to add mm, i do agree um a lot of people um have to uh, work like a full work week and uh, then study next to it to be able to pay everything and uh, a lot of people don't have to ta the time to do both at the same time okay Selina anything more to add um, I totally agree with these two girls um, it's just the time we uh, have not much time for uh, to do work and school at the same time and the money it's I think it's a big problem so you you basically telling the pressure to educate and to get an education is yeah. too high in the Netherlands, correct? No, not necessarily. I think education is really important and it is really important for people to get a good education and to uh, get the best out of themselves. Um, but I think uh, it has to be possible. So. Also, financially, it does have to be possible for people to do that. So the pressure is an issue. It is, yeah. If you just it translate it, it's the pressure from society. It's too high to get your education correctly and done. Yes. Because you have to work next to it and the combination of the two of it, it's too much pressure. That is what I understand from this conversation, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So we are done. But, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to vote on one of these three ladies, Damie, Selena or Stephanie, get your votes done because one of them has to make it to the finals on the 24th of October in Amsterdam, the Koning. So get your votes down on these three girls. And we will see one of them standing in the final facing team red, white or orange. Good luck, girls, and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you saw the teams. They are amazing. Didn't you find the same? Now it's up to you. You have to vote on one of each team. The winner of each team will be facing each other the 24th of October. And there, they will do the final test and there we will find out who the winner is of the head-to-head -head challenge. So, ladies and gentlemen, now we need you to get your votes done. Under the, the videos, you can put your vote by putting the name of the finalist and then we will count who will be the winner of the head-to-head -head challenge. So, ladies and gentlemen, now it's up to you.